Hi again. Uh, welcome to another now recording. Uh, we got some uh, records to talk about. Um, I went to Mystery Train Records in Gloucester um, yesterday, which is a really cool store. My first time I've been there, and uh, I bought a few things. The store is is crazy. I mean, they have a ton of stuff. Um, a lot of it is up in bins that are, you know, sortable, alphabetical, <clears throat> but a lot of it is just in piles either under those bins or just on the floor. Um, so you could be in there all day long and <laughs> your back starts hurting when you're just crouched over the entire time. So I didn't look through the whole store. Then there are like some shelves that are full of records that are just completely inaccessible or, or you know, kind of hard to get to. Um, but overall, I mean, the store is awesome. I'm definitely going to go back. <clears throat> but I found, and the prices are very reasonable, as you'll see. But I found a few things uh, that I uh, wanted to uh, to show um, that I picked up yesterday. So the first is this XTC album, uh, Mummer. Uh, XTC is kind of like a post-punk, uh, not quite new wave, uh, but but a little bit of that's kind of sound synthesizers and stuff like that. A little bit um, from England. Uh, and they were around, I think they're, they might even still be around, but they were around, uh, in their heyday was the late 70s uh, and early to mid 80s, <coughs> uh, through the 80s, I think. Uh, so this one is called Mummer. Uh, this came out in 1983. Uh, and to this point, the only uh, album of theirs that I had was Drums and Wires, which is kind of considered their their opus, and that came out in 1979. So I ha I love that album, but I didn't have any others. Uh, and actually, and to be honest, I'm not really even familiar with much of their other music that isn't on that album, other than um, a few songs that I've listened to here and there on YouTube from other things. But uh, this album, uh, uh, their other uh, early 80s albums are supposed to be very good as well. I listened to one last night, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, but again, I don't really know any of these songs, uh, but I'm looking forward to listening to them. And then just to, to open it up, because a lot of this stuff I really haven't looked at closely myself. Um, this is them. And these are the lyrics to the songs. Let's just take a look. This was on Virgin. No, Geffen Virgin. So these are all in really good shape too. I looked at them all before I before I bought them. So that is Mummer, 1983. I'm really I'm looking forward to listening to that. Uh, and as you can see, it was 450, which is you know reasonable. You're not going to find uh, I, you don't really come across XTC albums that much. That's totally reasonable. Here's another one I got. Um, excuse me for the uh, sniffles. Uh, this is from, uh, this is Black Sea. Um, your whole sense of it. And how they hid their name. So X, T, C. And I hid their name in there. I listened to this last night. <coughs> uh, this is great. This came out. It's going to be a little tough to read it. Oh, over here. Sorry. 1980. Uh, and there are some really good songs on this. Take a look at the sleeve. I think it's just a lyric sheet. Little focus. Um, what, generals and Majors. Uh, Love at First Sight. Uh, there were some really good songs on this one. I really enjoyed it. If you have any thoughts, good or bad, on this or any of our other records, please write to us via Virgin Records. I wouldn't invite that, but and the band. Uh, Andy Partridge um, was the singer uh, and guitarist. Uh, he plays his own voice of guitar. He thinks he owns a synth he's not sure who owns and other noises that could have been anybody's. Um, he apparently had terrible stage fright. Uh, Andy Partridge, and so for a long time, uh, there's video of of the band performing, you know, Top of the Pops and or, or uh, Old Grey Whistle Test and those kind of things uh, that came out of England. Um, those shows, uh, but after I think the the early '80s, um, he could not perform live. 
he just couldn't do it. So the, the band was just kind of a studio band uh, where they just released albums, but they didn't tour, didn't perform uh, live or anything like that. He uh, was definitely afraid of it, um, which developed, uh, you know, he might have always been that way, but, but it got so bad that he, he could not perform at all um, in a live setting, which is pretty crazy. Okay, So those are the two XTC albums I picked up. Uh, picked this up, uh, Desire by Bob Dylan. It was three fifty. Um, this is an album. Uh, this came out in nineteen seventy six. I want to say nineteen seventy five. If it would focus. Sorry about that. Um, so this has a Hurricane on it. Um, you can see the songs up here. Isis, One More Cup of Coffee is a great song. Oh, sorry for the glare. Uh, Sarah. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, it's actually one that I haven't spent a lot of time with. Uh, I have it on, you know, MP3, but I I'm looking forward to giving this a listen. And they had a bunch of copies of it. The, the price tag kind of ripped off it. This was three fifty on this one. And the other copies, interestingly enough... Um, had plain white sleeves. Uh, they didn't have this, so obviously I wanted to get this one. I don't know whether that is, uh, you know, that was uh, someone, you know, after the fact, just kind of, um, uh, you know, like they lost this, and so they added just a white cover. I'm not, I'm not sure about that. Uh, this is written by Allen Ginsberg. And what's funny about this, I want to see if I can find it, is, my, again, my friend Mike, I've mentioned him here, uh, he's the biggest Dylan and band fan that I know. And this album sold a lot. This debuted at number one on the Billboard charts in 1975. Uh, it's well regarded, so I'm not trying to make fun of it too much, but it's just, you know, it's, it's post Dylan at his absolute height of his powers. When you think of Bob Dylan, you think of the acoustic stuff from you know, times they are changing, freewheeling, uh, and then you think of the the early electric stuff from you know Highway 61, Blonde on Blonde, bringing it all back home. So uh, I guess Allen Ginsberg wrote this gushing review of this album that they put on the sleeve, and for one of the songs, Sarah, if I can find it, and I might not be able to. I'm looking for it. I'm sorry. Uh, but one of the songs he wrote, uh, he's finally done it. Like he's written like the greatest song of all time or something like his, his highest moment. And it's just kind of like, you're saying his highest moment is on some like, you know, the song, I like the song, but I mean, come on. Uh, but we've always kind of joked about that, uh, that quote, um, Emmy Lou Harris was on it. Yeah. So, uh, I have heard this, but I'm looking forward to, to hearing it. Um, I'm sorry for the glare there. Emily Harris. I'm going to see if there's anyone else I recognize. Hurricane's obviously a very famous song. Um, but I'm happy to get that. Uh, you know, I, I thought about, like, going for the Dylan set on vinyl. Which, <clears throat> you know, not counting some of the, um, you know, the bootlegs and stuff like that. Um, which would be pretty hard. Uh, but, you know, when I can find a cheap Dylan album, I'll buy it. And this one was actually good. They had others. They had stuff in the 80s that I just didn't want to buy right then. But maybe uh, in time, I'll, I'll want to pick that stuff up too. All right. Another one. And this is an example of this place. Um, literally, like one of the, under the, uh, the main bins, like underneath, were just a stack of records that were uncategorized. There was like... They weren't alphabetical. It was like Beethoven, you know, mixed in with Sinatra, mixed in with God only knows what. And I just, yeah, I was looking through some of that, not too closely because it just would take all day, but I was looking through it and I saw this. And I always liked this album cover. Um, this is from uh, 1986. Uh, Neil Young landing on water. It's not highly regarded, although I was reading about it last night and there are some people who champion it and say that it's really great, so uh, I'll definitely listen to it. Um, but I just always liked that cover. Um, so 
I kind of I kind of wanted to get it for the cover, and it's a Neil Young album, and it's it was five. I actually got it down to three fifty because see how it's all bent. It's a you know it's a little jacked up, and it's like that from sitting being crushed <clears throat> underneath uh, for ex an extended period of time. Who knows how long it was down there? Then you see the people on the lifeboat. I just think that's a cool album cover. Uh, Paul Rudd in Knocked Up uh, in one of the scenes wears this album cover on his shirt. Um, I don't know any of the songs. Uh, Hippie Dream might have been on like one of his live albums. I, I think I might have heard that. Um, oh, yeah, autofocus, come on. 1986, Geffen. So I think this is in the midst of Geffen uh, being upset with Neil Young because he just kept releasing these crazy albums. Um, Trans, which was him using a vocoder and like all this electronic music that, uh, and then uh, Everybody's Rockin', which was like a uh, uh, rockabilly album. So I think this kind of was back to, I, I guess this has electronic elements, which I'm interested in, but he's not using a vocoder, he's really singing and all that. Um, and from what I read yesterday, um, when I was reading about this, um, you know, I, I obviously, first of all, I mean, he was just doing whatever he wanted to do and they were mad at him because it wasn't harvest and you know, uh, what are you going to do? Um, you know, just make it, let him, <laughs> let him make the music he wants. But I guess that David Geffen apologized for, for that whole fiasco, uh, when the, the record company wasn't releasing some of his stuff because they wanted it to sound like harvest. Um, but anyway, uh, I'm looking forward to this. Let me just open this up. I don't know. I haven't looked at this yet. Uh, he's sitting on an airplane. Lyrics. Lyrics, lyrics, lyrics. And let's just take a look at the record itself. Black Geffen Records. Actually, it looks to be in pretty good shape considering that it was just sitting underneath a stack of other records for probably over a year. So, that's landing in the water. And I got two more by the same artist. Um, so, uh, of late, I've been getting more into 80s stuff. Um, I like that sound a lot. Um, I like the, the synthesizers and the moods that, that those bands can create. Um, I've been very much into The Cure uh, of late, and so another group that I heard about a lot and uh, I wanted to just see what they were about and go into a used record store where you can buy a couple other albums for 10, bu 10 bucks total uh, was a good way to do that rather than buying a new one for like 30. Uh, Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark, or OMD. So I picked up a couple of their albums. I'll start with this one. I actually listened to this one last night. Very cool. Uh, called Dazzle Ships. Uh, this came out in 1983. Um, uh, and this is interesting too, just about this, this uh, for promotion only, sorry for the glare there. Ownership. Ownership presented by CBS, sale is unlawful. I have another, I have an XTC record, that Drums and Wires record I mentioned is a uh, promo copy as well that I found at a used record store, so it's kind of interesting. Um, so this is, I, I read all about this album, uh, because the album that they came out with before this one, excuse me, um, which was called Architecture and Morality, was their breakthrough. And then they released this, which is very uh, dense, uh, it's, it's uh, what do they use, Me uh, music concrete. Uh, you know tactics and, and you know so basically like there's no meter uh, in, in a lot of the songs it's just like uh, computer noises or like uh, you, you know uh, they, they take snippets of people talking and, and change it uh, and like that's a song that's not what the whole thing is and this is still a pop album it has pop songs on it um, but like the, there'll be little breaks like Radio Prague is like that. Genetic Engineering was the single off of it. Telegraph was a single off of it. Um, but I really liked the atmosphere it created. I thought it was very cool. Um, especially when you have the, the kind of poppier uh, you know, 
radio friendly songs around that crazy stuff that they're doing. I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was uh, I thought it was neat, and I really like the inner sleeve too. It's like something out of like uh, you know War Games, um, the the movie with Matthew Broderick. Like uh, like they made this on an Atari, um, and then he turned it around. something else that I read about that was interesting uh, so this is on Virgin and I guess Virgin had you know maybe an American distribution set up with Epic uh, I'm not sure but Telegraph see that over here that is not a real record label I guess that OMD was so um, interested in kind of so they had always been in an indie band uh, you know, on independent labels, and they were interested in like maintaining that kind of illusion that they still were, even though they're signed to Virgin Epic. So they made up a record label called Telegraph, um, so that it would look like you know no one had heard of that. It would look like they were still on a, an independent label, from what I read. So that's pretty crazy. But I really like this. So my first foray into OMD, um, I really liked it, and then I picked up another one that they had there. This is called Crush. Um, this is from 1985, I think, and a pretty cool cover. Uh, don't you love when I'm like following me around? 1985, okay. Um, this one didn't have as much uh, information online, which makes me think that it probably isn't as good. Um, but. You know, mid-80s was their kind of heyday, so there's got to be some stuff worthwhile on it. Uh, we've got lyrics. More lyrics. And then let's take it out. And this was released on, uh, well, Virgin, but then A&M Records. So they must have switched distribution channels, Virgin, from epic to A&M between 1983 when the Dazzle Ships came out and 1985 when this came out. They did have an album that came out in 1984 between the two, so uh, I'll look for that, but that's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, Under Life's manufactured and distributed by A&M Records. So this is their American distribution channel. So um, that's it. So uh, just I, I found some stuff I really was, was itching to get into um, in... XTC and, and OMD, and then, um, you know, just a classic Bob Dylan album and a Neil Young album I didn't have, and that was my day at the record store, so um, I'm sure I'll be back soon, we'll do another collection video soon, and in the meantime, uh, thanks for watching.